wants to uh who wants to find my target? Who knows where my target is? I stuff. If you were watching Chart Raiders last week, I talked about two targets that hadn't been hit. And um so that dates back to bum, bum, bum. that dates back to roughly what's today's date. 30th. So that dates back to this right here. That dates back to a week ago when I talked about this with the first target hit and I said there was two targets left. Uh, one of the targets was, I think, 470. 470. And then around here, and this was the next target. So why are these targets? We're going to start the uh, day off like that. Why, why are these targets? Because it's tying into what we're talking about today. Or did back test? No. People are scrambling to look right now. Uh, the level's on the screen, so it'd be pretty easy to find. But this was the uh, the third test. So again, just just dating back to a few weeks ago on Chart Raiders here, three targets on the board. Um, again, the first one was hit. It pulled Bitcoin back. Hmm, well, this wasn't the first target right here, but uh, the first target was roughly something in here. It was roughly. I think it was. It's funny. I think it's like two seventy or. 270, 470, 670. I think it's all in and around there. I'm going to just mark it off because I don't like that. It feels like it's kind of wrong. I'd have to look at a replay to mark exactly um, what it is. But yep, there, there's there's three points here. And again, it has to do with, with, with what we have today. So if you rewind back, there's three targets that Bitcoin's going after to see if it can break out. Come on. Get Bitcoin to go there. Hits its second target, hits its third target. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus. Drank my coffee the wrong way. Um there's anyways, there's three targets it hits and, and it has hit all three of them. So uh pretty pretty big moment for Bitcoin right now. Uh you know, decent size pullback here happening on Bitcoin. We're gonna see what happens in the uh immediate future here, but these were the three targets that Bitcoin had had for a long time. And it comes down to what's known as basis of a move. This is something we talk about. Everybody just kind of pushes through bases of a move and just looks at origins only. <clears throat> and people think, okay, origins, and they, they mark origin levels. And that, that's correct. But you have two types of, of breakout levels. One is the base of a move and, and one is the uh, origin. So, you know, there are a lot of different ways in which we do have to look at, at uh, breakouts in the moment and support and resistance. And, and bases of the moves and origins kind of fall under the same thing, right? Like you have an origin of a level, which is a very defined moment. Like we can go and find some origins here. Um, you know, for example, right here, here's an origin level right here. Um, here's the base of a move right here. Like you have two different types of these, these kind of points, right? And so people often overlook bases of a move and just move straight to origins. Like they try to find these points like, well, this one was easy. This was an origin here that was uh, already set from this hold level and uh, it ends up holding its origin and moving up. And, and so that's fine. But a, a lot of times, you know, you get people who just... <clears throat> Everybody, what they do is they do this and they mark the origin and they never, they never look at, at uh, anything else. But, you know, there's an origin here and there's, there's always origins. Bases of the moves are also important. So as a first step, whenever you're looking at these moves, it's important to understand that an origin represents an original level, right? So that's, that's, that's the word, original level. But prior to an original level ha happening on a chart, like you have an origin right here, there is going to be sometimes the base of a move. So it's... um. You know, you, you, you don't, you don't define polarity as one moment only. I see a lot of people do that. They go two inwards. Like we could just constantly go inwards here and be like, okay, well, there's the hourly it broke. So it's gone. Let's just find the 15 minute here. And they'll just start, you know, marking everything. It's like, oh, here's the 15 minute. And that looks good until it breaks down. And then, you know, then they'll go super interior again and they'll be here and they'll say, oh, this, you know, here's the origin. And then, you know, oh, technically the origin never broke. And then you can always justify an origin somewhere on the chart. You can all, always go and say like, oh yeah, here's an origin right here. And uh, it, oh, it was broken. So now we're down to this one here. And, that, and that's fine. 
and those become points that are that act as support or resistance but um yeah there there's there's it's it's too often that people just <clears throat> they they overlook the base of a move and and then really like if you were to pull this move back to this point here and you were to say okay well there's no origins and there there may or may not be i'm not exactly sure there is there's a five minute origin there look at that that's so so awesome but but really it becomes the base of a move because actually technically it's not an origin is it does it even get tested? We can't consider that a test because it still ladders the move. That's laddering this. Does that ever even get tested? I'm sure it does at one point or another. It probably breaks through it at that point, right? Why we just go straight through? Come on. There it is. Just go straight through. And, oh, look at that. It doesn't hold anyway. So really, what's the point of it, right? So like the bases of moves are important across time frames. So if you move up to the 15, you could even say like the base of the move is here. Right. If you move to the hourly, well, not really. The base of the move is kind of here. And if that hard closes and breaks, now you're kind of down into this region. So just as important as marking origin levels for breakouts, if you were to mark this as an origin level on the hourly, or you couldn't even mark this one as an origin level. Let's find a 15. If you were to mark this guy right here as a as an origin, because that that could technically be an origin it will break down to the next level, right? Like it will break down to the next point. It doesn't mean it's going to crush the move because there, there are other origins on the charts. There are other, there are other points to a chart that, you know, if you break an origin, it's, it might, maybe it might not collapse the whole thing. And there's a theory that I haven't gotten into yet, which I won't get into today, another time, but there's a really important theory about time and what targets are what, um, you can't, you can't, you can't, like, you, you have to say, like, okay, 15 minute is going to go after another level on a different time frame, whether it be higher or lower. And again, we won't get into it today, but it's, it's, it's not a one puzzle fits all. Find the origin level, origin level breaks, and the move is gone. You know, there, there's a point of this move where it was the base of a move. And as long as you continue laddering that or, or staying above it and, and continuing to create trends, you know, the, the move is still moving up. <clears throat> and so that's where you find these targets on this side of the chart. So I want to go over here now and I want to look at these targets in the chart. Don't underestimate yourself. You know your stuff. Wait, what did I miss in chat? Hold on. Uh, let me catch up on chat before I go on this. I can I can origin back test. I can't see that far back, but on the four hour candle it's like a lower time frame. So four hours is that stuff back here. And that's where people get a little too caught up, right? Like origin represents breakout. Like this could have been a base of a move right here, right? Like this this was the base of this range right here. Like this little one, two, three, four, five, six, seven day range. This was the base of a range. So I would almost wonder if you were to go here and find something that would act as polarity. Now I'm sure there's more interior polarity, right? But that was the base of a range there. And uh, also with that, you would have also had some type of origin right here as well, right? Like 23,880. You would have had some type of origin here that it needed to, to pass by in order to have a breakout. And I'm sure 23,880 became another point too, right? It comes another point where it's trying to break out of that base of a move because simply put, when you go down in time frames, you can start finding these origin levels and all these back tests. And I'm sure, you know, 24, 250. Yeah, that's that level, 24, 250. So I had one of the levels as 24, 250 because I was deciding between these two. But then <clears throat> when you break this thing down, 24, 250, I knew it was in and around there. 24, 250 became one of the uh, important targets because it was the base of a move. And that became your first target on the move because it, it was that base of the move. So you can see kind of right here, like too, too often people just hyper focus on origin levels because they're easy to find and easy to understand but when you when you go to this you can see 250 was um like a pretty pretty uh, critical level here 250 250 284 hold on something's not right here um i think there's like just a trading view error here Oh, no, 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 because I was there. Okay, so I, I remember it was 250 for some reason. Let me go back in my, I, like, I want to say it was 270, but I'll put it at 250 because I remember it being there somewhere as well. It was like a little level in here somewhere that acts as something. It was the base of a move on a different time frame. Here it was, right here. No, it's not this one. This one, I'm looking for the one that back tested here. Here it was, yeah, 250. Yeah, I'm looking for the one that back tested the, to hold up the move because that kind of becomes the base point, right? Like if you go over top of this, you've obviously deep, deep divin this. Um, 
a backside here, right? Or if there's a different time frame, possibly a four. But then you go and you back test and hold over top of, of this right here and you move up. It was it was the base of the move, right? It's what back tested before. And that was one of the big targets on the chart. That's that 250. I knew I knew there was something wrong there when I saw it. But anyways, you could always go back on the Twitch replays and see that 250 there as well. Um, so you so see you're, 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 you're left with your first level here. I'm going to delete this 251. It's making it very confusing. I delete that one so it's not confusing. So that's your first level. Your second level is another break base point. Let's go back to the daily here. It's just a lot easier to do that on this daily. <clears throat> ah, oops. Right here, go to the four hour. I believe this one was on the one hour as well. It shows well on the four hour, but it was also on the on, on the one hour. Um if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was also on the one hour here. So this becomes, again, the base of a move, right? It's not quite an origin, but it's kind of like the controller on the move. It's the piece of the move that had held it up. So way too often, and, and this is really what represented the long-term breakout in, uh, in Bitcoin. And you can see it, like it never even comes back down to test these levels. At this point, this was like the, uh, the final level that would hold up to move. It was the hourly point. It goes, it back tests it, and it moves straight up. So, so in a way, it, it in itself would create a bunch of origins, I'm sure right here. Dude, seriously, I'm sure it creates a bunch of origins inside of here. Like if we if we go to like the hourly replay or two here, I, I almost I, I haven't even seen this, but you can already tell there's like there's going to be origins created there just by the architecture of how it tests it. Right. So you could go here. You could go to the 15. Hopefully we have access to that. If we don't, we'll force it. Um, 15 minute origin right here. 720. So you'd have some kind of like origin level right here. Right. You'd have some type of origin right there. And then. I don't think we can get to the five, nor do I think the five would be important in this moment. Hold level that holds up the move. And so you're going to have some kind of base right here, right here, here. One of these two candles has got to be like where the base of the move is, but it's already preset from, from the past. It's just, you know, you can, you can find that somewhere in here. So you could even say it's right here, 720, 700, like something like right here. Maybe that, maybe there is a smaller time frame that acts as a localized base, but it's irrelevant finding this origin. Like that's the point of this. We even, even if it's here, it's irrelevant finding it because this was the base of the move. This is what had held it up. This is going to be that point of clarity, right? So I think way too often people just ignore the basis of moves because they would look for this and they would say, oh, okay, well, here's, here's kind of the base of the move. Like deep dive that, pull back. But you know, when you touch this and bounce off of it, it's just telling you that you're breaking down. So, you know, real worry today for Bitcoin, even though this, this pullback is small, if, if this pullback materializes, it means that it's touched its final polarity point and it's just straight moving off of it. So if you start, you know, you could open a candle down here. Um, this, this could get really spooky for Bitcoin because simply put, it was just the base of the move. It's what broke the move out in the, in the past. It's just like an origin level. And then it's also what can support it in the future. Let me catch up on chat here. 26, 631. Mm, you'd want to go higher than 631 for sure. Not gonna lie, maybe think about bases like once a week, massive, massive week. Yeah, well, there's a time and place for each thing, right? Like an origin versus a base of a move. Like right, right here, here was the, the perfect example of that. Like a time and a place for everything. Like this was kind of the base of this whole entire range that was being created. Um, you know, this can create trends, which is fine. But, you know, there's not really a lot of origins here to be had. More of an advantage versus a basis I don't see. Distribution candle. It's just a breakout point. They always seem to hit the wicks to bisect the swing. Um, no. Hit the wicks? No. It's about understanding where the base of the move is. Like That's what created support for this thing to move up. That's what can hold it down. Whatever breaks something up is also what can hold it down. We talk about this in mentorship like almost on a bi-weekly basis. Whatever breaks a move up can also hold it down. Or whatever breaks it down can also hold it up kind of thing. It acts as a point of polarity, right? And you end up having three of them here. 270 was another one that we can go find. Uh, okay, replay our tool. This one here. I think this was the uh, right there, which creates here. So this was the untested hold level. So the untested hold levels here. I think it ends up being like this, if memory serves me correctly. So you go 
back test this backside right here, 370. I believe this was tested in the moment. Broke above it. Yeah. And what I don't like about this is you don't have any like really clean back tests on it. You don't have any origins created. You don't have any real clean back tests, so it doesn't become the base of the move. As to where something like this, this would be the base of the move. So that kind of the next thing right here would be something like this could create the next base. You have this, it never creates. You have your backside here. And there you have a pretty important point too. Like these would have been the two, the two points, like two different targets that you could have looked at, like base of the move, base of the move. This one's tested, that one's tested. Maybe you could say this, that's where that 470 level comes from. But in all honesty, I would rather see this. And I think I'd have to go look at the Twitch replays, but I believe I had this one. I want to say I had 450. I want to say I had 270, 470, and 670. But that's just too, too, too weird. I think my brain is just playing a trick on me. I want to say that I had 542 because this was the base of that move. And this was the base of the final part of it. So I want to say I had these, but I don't think this one was ever hit. But for some reason, I, rem I remember dissecting this and saying, okay, well, this is the part of the move that can hold it. But that's fine. We're not going to worry about that. Let's just go with what we see on the screen. <clears throat> 470. There's something at 470. I know there is. That's okay. It's not important. Anyways, the base of the move is important. You can definitely see how trying to put this move into some type of box or criteria will kill you on this. Difficulty not thinking too statically about what we think a base needs to be. Yeah, and we're just going to go dissect like a random spot, right? Like just, we're just going to go and we're going to take the replayer tool. We're just going to say, um, I don't know, like right here. Sure, why not, right? So so you you are going to have a lot of these like origin levels that you find. So something like, don't one there, not one there. Something like this, origin level for the future. I'm sure that has like a big breakout point. Um, but there's also going to be bases of the moves, right? Like, you know, before before this, what about on the bottom side? Where's the base on the bottom side? So is it, is it an origin? Yeah, in, in this case it was. And that could have even maybe been preset from back here. Looks like this is maybe where the smaller time frame origin starts. And then um, if this exists before this, like on a 15 minute time frame, I'm sure you could find it. Come on. Or you could find that 15 minute time frame there somewhere. No 15 minute here. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I don't like using a five in this case. Yeah, I don't like using the five. Although you do have it right here. I think you just get a little bit of a greedier entry by going after this, but we can see how that reacts, but I just don't like using the five there. So this is a case right here where, okay, you can you know, rewind it a little bit. You can look at this move and you can say, okay, there's an origin here, there's an origin here, but what about like the base of the move? Where would the base of the move on this be? Like, where's the base of the move that's holding this whole thing up? I would say, I'm trying to think of a way I can create a test, but no, there's no way. It would be kind of right here. Yes, no. Would it be right here? Yes, no. Come on. You're right here. Yes, no. Would it be here? Would it be this hold level? Well, the hold level won't be a base of a move, right? Like the hold level can't be the base of the move. Would it be the origin before it? Would it be back here? Like where would it be, right? Hint, it's none of these that I've shown so far. would actually be back here. This would actually be the base of the move. And the reason it's the base of the move prior to origins being created is because it's kind of the thing that creates the range, right? Like it's it's what creates the range and what creates that point that would attack. Almost as if you were to go into a lower time frame here, you can see the splitting between kind of like this hemisphere of the move up here versus if you lost this level, you'd be down into back into this range right here, right? Like you'd be down back into this range right here, which would be the base of this move. Like this it would be this would be like the base of this move like this is the base of this move this is the base of this move so this is the way people have to see origins and bases because origins are great but the problem with origins and bases is they typically break out one to the another like one to another like when when this breaks you're typically going to go back and test this base or ladder off it and create some kind of breakout point right like 
in this case, you could do it right here and you would be like, okay, well, you've got this to this, which ends up probably being like something like this on the hourly, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ends up being like this to this. I'm sure you're here and then through, you know, series of hard closing, you go to here. But when you break this origin, you're likely just going down to the next base of the move, right? Which is right there, which is what you do. You go down to the next base, you see if the move can stabilize. And then that's it. So that, that's kind of like the point of origins is that people tunnel vision them too much. Like the theory is solid. Everybody has like a lot of really good theory on origins. Um, but then, you know, you zoom into this chart and it's like pretty, pretty obvious what happens. It's like you have your hourly trend created off the base of this move. Uh, right. You have an origin that breaks a level base of the move holds, creates trend. Like all that stuff is tested. So once you lose this trend, you're kind of just going to, to the next base of your move, right? Like right here, this is like the next base. It's the next kind of point of polarity. So you do, and you go here and then you, you know, move up. I'm sure you probably moved, you know, right up off of this base, right? So you break underneath it and move up again. But the point isn't how the move plays out. The point is that bases of the move, like bases of moves and origins have to be looked at in the same light and not forgotten about because if you're looking at origins too much you're going to miss the next kind of part of the move and then the next part of this move would be i want to say this first glance i want to say this right here you could have polarity as creating the base of the move as well right because this in this case you don't really have an origin um Oh, you do actually. What about the other time frames? Let's double check this before a four hour backside holds the move down. Yeah, so four hour backside, four hour backside. Origin level here, but this is already testing that backside. So let's test the hourly right here, right? So this is testing your hourly. So it's reversing to this right here, right? So that that's the base of your move. That's the base of your move because that was the point of breakout. So that's that's really important to understand. Like we have origin levels, but they can they can be further refined for accuracy because most people would do this and they would forget about like the base of the move. But this is the point of polarity. Ba bases of moves and, and origins, it's all to find polarity in charts, right? Like it's all to find polarity. So you can see that this hits here and then this reverses the move and the reverse is what breaks out the move. I'm sure off of some broken trend, right? Like I'm sure off of some, like something like this right here, right? Ends up breaking trend, back testing trend, moving up, right? So I'm sure, I'm sure there's some type of, you know, same, same exact thing almost that happens here. You break trend, back test, move down, break trend, back test, move up. Right. So, so there's kind of like this shared polarity between these levels. So base, bases of moves can't be forgotten because bases of moves are quick TLDR. Yeah, sure. It's in future of trading, I believe, or in butterfly effect, there's a whole lesson on it, dude. It's called bases. Um, yeah, yeah, that would be a TLDR and go watch that. So that that's like. The point of bases and origins are to find polarity. They're to find polarity in the move, what broke out a move and what is holding up or down a move. Um, yeah. Once this breaks, you're at your next base, right? Like you, you can't, you can't tunnel vision origins too hard because origins and bases, they represent the same thing. Origin is a point of polarity. A base of a move is a point of polarity. This is a point of polarity. Like it's, it's good to understand why they exist and where, but they all do represent polarity. So the basis of a moves are created when in the moment, if you lost it, you would have been down back at the lower range, but by holding it, you create the base. Hey, wait, let me reread this. Uh, so basis of moves are created when in the moment, if you lost it, and it's not about losing a level is what creates a base. It's finding the point of polarity. By holding it, you create the base. No, it's about finding polarity in the move. Every everything we do on the charts is to find those polarized moments. Po polarity ends up being the greediest level, right? <clears throat> like if you think about the tra the trail of why would we want to find polarity? Well, because it would just be the greediest part of the move. Otherwise, it wouldn't be polarity. So, anything that creates polarity is always what we need to find. And then by understanding it, knowing the points that can move a chart up or down off of that would be, you know, oh, if we didn't reach polarity, but we hit this point, right, then you'd be moving up. Um, and, and it would be, okay, we're, we're just simply not hitting polarity, maybe in the future sometime, but not yet, right? Isn't that 2595 hold level? Didn't you say the base can't be created a few minutes ago? 
29th at 95. Yeah, before I looked for the uh, reason what, what like broke it out or held it down, right? Didn't you say the base can't be a hold a few minutes ago? I, it's, it's just about finding polarity. It's, it's simply just about finding polarity. It doesn't have to be the... This, this isn't the base of a move. This isn't the base of a move. This is just polarity in the move. The base of the move would be something like this guy here or this guy here, right? It, this, is, this is not a base of a move. This is just simply polarity. That makes sense? You can define ranges and bases, yeah. Yep, absolutely, sugar. Every you have to you have to realize everything you guys do, guys and gals, everything you do in the charts, every single thing you do is to find the greediest levels, the tops or the bottoms, right? The best entry spots. Every single thing you do. So if all you're ever doing is marking origin levels, and not saying that's all everybody does, but origins as breakout points, let's put it that way. Origins are a type of polarity. But again, so are bases of moves. And again, so are inverse hold levels or hold levels that constantly held up a move to create polarity. Typically, when you have a hold level that creates polarity, you go over and over and over and over, and then you create this kind of breakout point, right? So like something like this, like this would be like, oh, here's an origin level. And then when you hard close a candle over top of it, you're going to move up. But that that's very far in the future, right? Like you almost want to buy this this origin breakout before it happens, right? Like, so how would you do that? Oh, you have a trend that breaks. And, and that's all fine. And that's all true. But, you know, origin levels represent breakouts, but they don't always represent the final polarity of a move, right? Like they don't always represent final polarity. Like the whole point of marking a whole level, of marking the base of a move, an origin, a trend, every, well, maybe not trends. Actually, trends wouldn't be, trends might not be um, a polarized point. They're just confirming larger time frames. But everything we do is to find the greediest level. Like if you, if, you, if you put every ingredient into a soup, everything we do is literally to find the greediest level. Because if it is truly the greediest level and you set your order there, it's, it can only move up. Unless the move is completely collapsing, the greediest level doesn't hold. But everything we do, it's like you have to take your theory of origin levels and you have to extrapolate it and expand on it because there are more than one type of like breakout levels in the charts, right? Like an origin level would be, so for example, this one right here, this is an origin level, right? That origin level is representing this part of the chart, right? Origin to origin or origin to whole level. Like here, for example, is this the level or is the polarity actually right here, right? Is the polarity the move that was holding or is it the actual breakout point, right? So <clears throat> there's always going to be like, well, you could set two orders here. You could set one here or here. Could you create polarity here? Yes. Could you get better entry here? Yes. Right. So like everything we do is polarity. And then, and then this would represent the breakout of, you know, a larger piece of the chart, you know, left to right, it would be a longer and larger piece. So if you lost this base, you would end up going down to your next base. And then your next piece would be like that, right? It would be from here to there. Like these are all points on the chart that can create different types of, of breakouts below. Obviously you have an origin right here, this 21,187, this one, it's obviously already lower than this. So there, there would be no points in saying, oh, we broke this polarity here, or, you know, even mark it back to here. Oh, we broke this polarity here, or even the backside now. And the backside would become, become almost like the base of the next move or the polarized point to the next move. If this keeps getting tested, right? It's like kind of that polarized moment. The same thing with the base, this whole level here, like things break down in chunks. They don't just automatically go down. Here's an origin level. So you would be missing a lot if you didn't have, let's say the, come on, so the base of that move there. If you didn't have that, if you didn't have this here and all you ever had was like, oh, origin here, <clears throat> you'd be missing a lot in between. You'd be missing all like the in-between movements, right? So. It's not that this origin won't create like this long-term breakdown, but again, you would be missing like this move represents the base of this piece here. So if this keeps holding, it's going to make an origin and continuously go up. So, so you're going to be missing a lot of the in-between stuff if you're not using your bases. Like if you don't have all these levels marked on your chart, you, you're going to be missing a lot of stuff, right? Like I'm not sure why that one is there. I think it was supposed to be the whole level here. Um, you know, move forward in the charts a bit here, see what happens. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh, I think I was clicking that manually. I think I was clicking the play button over and over and over. 
um, you're going to be missing a lot. Like there's, there's a lot, I'm sure there's lots of, you know, polarized points in this chart. We don't have to go through each one, but you know, there's hold levels that could hold up the chart right here. You've got, you know, hold level right, right there and some kind of origin point inside of this maybe, or, you know, something like right here where this is like some type of origin back here that's local to this part of the move. Like you'd be missing a lot in between if you simply just marked origin to origin and origins do, they do represent big breakout points, but you know, it's not the only thing on a chart. It's not the, it's not the kind of last and final thing. There's an origin level break the chart and then that's it, right? Like you have to see more than origin levels. It's how the targets were found. Even, even just like, forget all this. Um, just delete this stuff for a second. Forget all this. What about these targets? What about these three targets that I found on the chart? You know, if you want to find those targets, like, you know, let's take the replayer tool off. Where are we here? You, you want to find these targets. I'm still certain I'm making a mistake on this one, but that's fine. We're going to leave it. If you, if you want to find, like, I, God, I want to go back into my Twitch replays now. It's, it's really bothering me. If I haven't marked on my bit yet chart, I don't. God damn it. Anyways, not important. I'm sure it's like 450 or 470. There's something in there that I missed, but it's okay. If, if you want to find kind of like this point here, this point here, if you want to find those, those, those points, it's, you know, it's not always origin level. It's not always, well, you can see it happening right now, right? Like it's the base of this move. So like bases of moves are, are critically important. What am I missing in here? I'm missing something. Maybe I do need to go to the smaller time frames. Origin level holds up the chart. No, like this is literally it. This is literally what got back tested the whole time and held up the chart. Is there says it maybe right here. I don't think this gets targeted either. I don't even think that gets targeted either though. Like, I'm not happy to say that that's the target. I know there's something else here. There's no origin here. This ends up being that kind of part of the move. This ends up being like the reverse ladder point, but then it doesn't back test that. So I don't like that. So I could say this if it was actually back tested because okay it's a hold level it held the move down and then it did back test it here and here and there but it doesn't so then it automatically makes you look right here right like that's that's kind of like the origin level on the even smaller time frame like right here right that's that's the origin level on the even smaller time frame. certain there was something else but okay we're, we're gonna leave it at that because i don't really i don't remember what the hell i marked but i remember looking through and i'm sure it was 470 but anyways that's okay um yeah, final target on Bitcoin because after that, <clears throat> next part of the move you're in is right here. Is is something in here? Next part of the move you're in is something in here. This really can't be the base of a move, can it? So you're gonna have a trend from here to here, which I'm sure has some kind of future implications on that top side of the chart. Like I'm sure there's something out here that gets hit. So what else do we have here? I haven't looked up in this range. So you've got a whole level right here. But I like this kind of more. I, I, I like this kind of more. Like I like this, that it back tested it. It tried to break it and never moved up. So this is where we can start developing like the base of this move as the polarized point. This is where we can start saying like, okay, what was actually tested and held this move up? So this is looking good so far, but let's go to the 15. See what else we can find. Could we even say it's this? The problem is, let's delete this trend. Not really, no, I don't like it. Can we say it's this? It's not about lining up with this. I have no care about that at all. I have a care to look at like how the sequence of testing happened in here. Like could this have broken it out on a time frame? Could this have? What about the hourly again? Let's go back to this hourly and take a look. That's nothing really there on the hourly. So you're just kind of back to like right here on the hourly. So you're just kind of like back into like this range here, like whatever broke this out locally. So wherever this stops, like did that stop in the moment? That's what I want to know. It, it kind of does, doesn't it? 
kind of does bounce off that. So what was this breaking out of? It was breaking out of something like right here or possibly here, something, something inside of here. Some, there's something in here on the lower time frame that it was breaking out of. So what do you do? 951, 927. So what level do you mark next? You got a decision to make there. So you could cheat this and I guess we can cheat this. Well, there's two things I could do to cheat this. I could go use the, uh, which I don't think I should. I could use a trading view repository, which I pretty sure that's like a big TOS thing. Or you could simply go to the replay tool and cut it a few candles back. Hopefully we can get back here. Nope. No, I know I'm not using the keyboard right now. So hopefully we can just kind of cheat trading view a little bit. Use this little kind of hack and hopefully we can get far enough back in time. Nope. It's too far. Okay. So we've just got to use our best judgment here. I mean, I could find it on the repository, but I don't, I'm not going to do that because I'm pretty sure it's against their terms of service. Maybe go forward a few candles. Like I'm looking for the base of this move. So I really have to like sit here and, and figure out what the base of this part of the move is. Because once this base breaks, it's just that's where gaps do, right? Like that's where it goes. So there's going to be two parts of this. And we're going to, we're going to talk about that next part of this as well. Because this isn't the only piece of this that we would need to look at. Let's go back in here. Let's do it again. Okay, dude. <clears throat> so something's testing here twice. That's whatever's testing to hold this thing up is also what is going to hold it down. So now we have to find the base of this. So let's start with the hourly. Let's go back to here. What's that price? 970. Way too high. Way too high. I would like to think that whatever this was, was the final reverse that tested it perfectly to hold it up. I would like to think that's what it is. So then you're really back down to, there's a hold level here which I don't, I'm not convinced that that's it. Is there something before that that defines that whole level? There's simply this stuff back here. So 927 kind of looks like where I want to set my order because it does look like the base of the move. If I go a little higher, my worry here is that I'm targeting the whole level, but the whole level's created off something prior, which would be this. It could also be this, but I really doubt it. It can't be. It could also be this at 970. So I think you have two choices here. You have 970 or you have... 927. Pretty, pretty big difference in price, right? I think you have two levels here that you have to mark. And this covers, if you want to go for the greedier level, you go for 970. If you want to go for the safer guarantee to get in, you go for 927. So th this is, it's a point of clarity, right? Like it's, it's what broke the move out into some like new all-time high. And it has nothing to do with new all-time high. It just broke it out of its range and it's also holding it up. So I would like to say this one, but let's just remember that I marked 970. Let's just go like this. You know what? We'll do it like this and we'll make it. We'll just communicate it very clearly. I am not taking my level on the dotted line. I'll take my 927 level and I'll happily take that as the, uh, as the trade. And I might even consider doing one more thing here. Might even consider doing one more thing, which is this. And I might consider marking this level here and checking if it has a really high time frame. Because this looks like it could be an origin in the future, 26. So let's check if this has a higher time frame implication anywhere. It does right here. So this is going to be important for us to go and look if any of these targets bounced it. And it does right here too. But I don't care about this. Okay, you know what? Screw it. We'll just mark it anyways. The replayer tool off and see where the basis of these moves. If there was anything here that was important, I don't, I guess not, right? Well, that's good. Qu quickly get it out of the way, right? Like that's good. Was there anything here that caused some, some kind of, some kind of reaction bounce hold? which is good because then we can start to create like a basis of understanding of what was tested. So we can automatically, like this was never quite tested. How close did it get? I would have liked this to touch this because then I could have just deleted this and I could have said, yeah, there's no hourly there. So did it test the hourly and it's going to test it again or did it test the four hour? Well, it tested the hourly. So this is like, you know, getting even more polarized in that move. If it had tested that four, I could take off this one and say, well, the one isn't anything. It's not going to be reversed. If anything, it'll go over top of this a little bit and then pull back down. Like maybe if there was another base of a move right here at 20, where was that level? 
yeah. So like maybe if you had something like this, you could deep dive over this 66, go for 91 and then pull back. If this had tested that pretty perfectly or that could have went after that and pulled it back and then it could have reversed this. But none of those I don't like. Now 26, 117 is starting to look like where I want to take my trade. If I'm talking about the most polarized moment in this chart. 26,117 is, is what it looks like I want to take my trade at because it has already deep in it. It can test it again. And then it can make a trend lower time frame here to there. So then it, you then you can have an interior trend range off it. So this this is kind of why I wanted to talk about the basis of moves because it's not important that you're looking specifically for, oh, let's start marking the basis. It's about understanding where polarity exists on a chart. 26,117 is also a daily break where no way. Oh, so it is. Son of a bitch. Well, that's what creates it too. Uh, that's the perfect level. That's exactly where I would take my short. And now you can see where it got created on the hourly. So by understanding the basis of moves and polarity, you were able to find it without even seeing the higher time frame implication, which would have happened only in the future. The daily backside, son of a bitch. A part of my language, but that's just like, it's amazing when it's, so that's the point of this, right? Like that's the point right there. That's exactly the point is that you can find those polarized moments. If you understand the way the architecture works, it has nothing to do with like, here's the origin level. Here's the, you know, the, this time frame or that time frame. those things are important, but understanding the flow of a chart in the architecture is what you have to open your eyes to. And like un understanding the way in which we come to these conclusions is, is more valuable than marking the level and just being like, oh, that's a, that's a strong level because it's the daily. That's the strong one. Like, oh, okay, man. Like, what does that do for you? Nothing. It's a very archaic, static way of looking at things where you box yourself into these, oh, it's the daily it means it has 10 out of 14 strength. Like, it doesn't do anything. It's, it's more about understanding the, the flow of how these things get created because they're just data points regardless of the time frames. So like bases of moves, everything we're talking about simply is just to find polarity because if you find polarity as, as a single word, as a single statement, polarity defines you're either going to move up or down, which becomes a finalized moment. So polarity is a finalized moment in the charts. Three minute origin at 163. Uh, I would be, wait, let me zoom in here. Okay. So you have some kind of three minute in between this and the top here, the 163. So something like this, it'll be interesting to see if it hits. It'd be interesting to see if that actually goes after that. Um, 163 that that origin the whole point of this whole talk today is to understand that polarity like if i had to boil this down to one thing i would say like understand that everything we do is to find polarity so if you're only ever finding polarity on origin levels there's a lot you're missing it's not to downplay origin levels or to say that you've been using them too much or too little they're another tool in our kit in order to understand how a chart moves to find polarity because again polarity is that true moment whether polarity is a trend a hold level, an inverse hold level, the base of a move, an origin point, a final hold, a, a deep dive, no matter what, they're all finding the same thing. It's like all of these different tools to find the same target. And the target is like the top or the bottom. And that is defined by polarity, which is, which is extremely important to understand. So this 26, one, what is it that got hit today? 24, six something. That was relatively easy to find like and and that goes back to the twitch streams when i had those on the twitch streams like if this pulls it back now you know where i found the, the, the target and why it was there and why back here i said yes there's there's three targets total and then you know we hit our first one we pull back and then there's two more there's this one and there's a pullback and then there's this one and i and i know i messed up on this one because this went to pull it back like i i'm certain it's i've i've gone and looked in deeply in this and it's either like 450 it's, it's somewhere in here. I know it is. Otherwise, it wouldn't have pulled the move back so rapidly because, like I said, there was three targets total. And the first one was hit and there were still two more in the charts. And there's your first one or your second one, the first one after the first one, so the second one, and then the final one, the third one. How far back in time do you use polarity using the example you just gave? Level is based 
off of the last round. Ooh, great question, Gamma. That was the right question to ask, Gamma. We'll come back to that in a second. Read what Jesse said, but that was the right question to ask. Goes into a theory I call capsules, which I haven't taught yet, but we'll go over it very slightly. Uh, do the targets of these bases hitting correlate to their respective time frame? Uh, time frame doesn't really have anything to do with it. Everything boils back down to a one minute time frame at some point. Target break on the other side of the range. I don't think about targets at all with bases. Yeah, bases are good targets. They're great targets because if a base holds, it's obviously the base of the move is holding. So the range is holding. So when you're thinking about bases and all that, there's kind of this thing I call capsules. And capsules look something like this. It's interior, exterior, a capsule. So I think it's safe to say that this is the largest part of that kind of capsule, right? So like if you were to illustrate this, how you do it is like the capsule would be something like this would be your exterior targets. Um, I'm just thinking about how I can draw this. Okay, so you, you, this would be like that. And then your next capsule would be kind of like this. I, I'm trying to draw it from here, like this. Your next capsule would be like this, interior parts of that range, right? So your next capsule will be like that. So you're going to go after the interior components first, and then you're going to go after the exterior components. But but it's all one part of a move. Like this is all one part of a capsule. It kind of looks like a hammer, actually. I call it the hammer pattern. Um, this is this is all part of like one capsule of levels. Like this would be like what looks like without going any deeper into this move. And there could even possibly be something here, but I don't really think so at this point, especially since this is back tested. Like when I look at this, I say, okay, whatever this back test here, like whatever this big cattle back test, this level here created this by rejecting that. So actually the capsule might look like this right here. Like that might be the final polarity point. But in this case in point, I would actually go after the daily because that could deep dive this target into the daily. So you could indeed stop right there because daily gets created. It's polarity, moves up, creates deep dive target for what looks like the polarity of this move is at that next point. So this is polarity, but because of the way this candle formation here, like just this, it's just a very peculiar setup where, where you, you do have the backside created and also the base hit. So it's just a peculiar setup. So, so this is kind of like the exterior targets and this is the interior targets. Just like if you were to have a capsule like this. Go to your four hour, come back here, and this here would have been like the larger capsule. Like this would have been like polarity and some move like this, right? It would have been like, uh, hold on, let me just turn that magnet off there. It would have been like capsule here right and then your next capsule would have been like kind of like from wherever that next polarity point down would be so like say something like that's a break right there looks like there's a trend right there some type of hold level in here so base of the move right here so base of the move right here so this would have been like kind of the same thing right it's like interior exterior against the moment right so th th those are, are almost like the exact same thing right like if you were to zoom out to the, to the much bigger part of this so th th those are kind of like the exact same thing it's like the capsule of interior versus exterior inner polarity versus outer polarity so you'd have to break over uh just just like we did actually right y you know right here like you have this base of a move which is here by the way um if you wanted to see the polarity point in this this part of the trade after after uh 20 like with 27.7 this would have been the base of that move. So this acts as polarity, as you can see. You could have went and said like, oh, here's the uh, 
or our backside. And that would have been great in the moment. But then as you go over your target, you know, obviously you have like a reverse level here, which isn't even hit, right? Like that's not even hit. And uh, you have the wick here or the base of the move back here. So there, there could be some type of base of the move in between here, right? Um, which could be created off of this right here. It's created off of that. That's not, that's not the level, but it is created off of that. So, so it ends up being you touch, you touch, you touch. You get over top of that and then you hold over top of that to try to break out and you break down below, right? So just identifying where that base is would have been pretty important right there. Um, would have given you a little bit better entry on, on the breakup afterwards, right? Like you go up to your target, you come back down, you hold this base of the move. Could have also held this backside, but it's just not as good of a target. But base of the move, it's it's like the same thing with, um, it's it's capsules, right? It's exterior target and the interior targets you need to get there. So so that's the same way you would have to look at this right now. Like this, this move here, if we zoom back out, it would have been like, you've got to break over all of this to get the, to that part of the move, right? But that that's still all like within polarity to move down long term. So good question, Gamma, like how far you can go back. It's about identifying like the exterior larger component backside or or whatever broke you down overall. And you could even maybe. Like obviously 29.9 is, is the big one, right? Like obviously 29.9 is the big one, that 240 level. That, that's the big one. I would almost wonder like what this range was right here. I don't really think that range is important to be honest. I think 29.9 is the big one. So I think you've got kind of interior, exterior, and then larger target 29.9. Uh, 29.2, sorry, 29.2. Wait, isn't 29 what people have been saying it's going up to? Yeah, I mean, maybe they're right. Maybe 29 is the, <laughs> but it's just like, yeah, well, that's what held it up. So that's what's gonna break down, right? <clears throat> so good question gamma because that's like the uh the, the, the bigger capsule of the move interior and exterior components of a move right like it's it's all one part of the move it's just this would be like defining front side or back side almost in a way hopefully that makes sense i think it should yeah i think it should it definitely does Um, any more questions before we move on? Let's see if there's any other any other questions here. It's really again it, like I just can't iterate this enough that it's it's really about finding the polarity in a move and and if you can we have a lot of tools to find polarity. Sometimes trend is polarity if trend has been there for a long time. Sometimes um, you know a base point is polarity. Sometimes an inverse is polarity. The whole point of everything we do is to find those polarized moments and if you can find them and if your targets get hit and they were truly pol polarity like you're not really ever going to be in a bad spot or at least you're going to be in positives before before you can see the move like oh you know we've got polarity right now in this move this was my final target i think we're moving down off of this long term now but we're going to see i could also see a case for this thing moving up but this was my final target 24 681 i didn't have anything past this i haven't charted past this Today, the little bit we did today up in here is like my next set of levels, which apparently is now also a weekly trend. Um, but this was my final target. So to me, it looks like we're breaking down. That This has been my final target for a while since whatever two or three weeks ago in Chart Raiders when we were pumping and I was trying to take trades on that. But it's all to find polarity. Like, don't, don't, don't forget that. It's all to find polarity. Okay, no question. Oh, maybe Marcus has on care. No questions. Anyways, we can move on. I 
Exercise is fine, dude. Clarity and the trainer will be clutch. Yep, absolutely, Marcus. Couldn't agree more. All part of the plan. All part of the plan. Uh, today's a big day just for anybody who hasn't been paying attention. Um, today's a pretty big day for Discord, so uh, make sure you're at the uh, meeting at 11 o'clock. Not that we're ending right now or anything, but just saying make sure you're at the meeting at uh, 11 o'clock because today was, is going to be a big day for Discord and everything that we do here. So. so if we reverse there, it would make sense to go towards the weekly target afterwards. Flow daily to weekly as the move did reverse on a daily breakout. It was a four hour origin that got hit on the bottom sugar. You're talking about like back here? 18 zero. I'm just gonna mark the level and see what you're talking about. 031. Oh, you're talking about this right here, I think, right? No, it was a four hour origin sugar that got hit. It got hit like to the T. It was a four hour origin holding up the move. This is just, this is just uh, indicative of long term breakdown. But this is just telling you that this move will break down long term because the breakdown is already set up. This is, this is setting up polarity for the future. So this is setting up a move down to 12k and then 12k to 17 and then 17 holds it back to see if 12k can hold. That That's what this is setting up. Like the long term flow of this chart is like this. That already held the move. That move part of the move already held. Um, I believe actually it was the uh, inverse that was the base of this move. The inverse already held. So now it's setting up like whatever. I think it's like right here. 11.8 if I remember correctly. Base of this move was not here. That was too high. I think it was this right here. Yeah. And so now it's going to like 11.8 to see if this can hold. Because this had already broken, right? Like you can see that's where that polarity comes from. Broke over top of it, you back tested it to hold, and you started laddering the move after that back test, right? So then you have something like this, right? Or even here, here, right? You have something like that. I believe this, if, if memory serves me correctly, it goes here and it was an hourly to here. And then if memory serves me correctly, it's like this, if memory serves me correctly. It was this, yeah lost that that trend and moved down this is just based purely on memory because i remember it was either this candle or this candle it might have even been this one it was one of these two i remember it's not the bottom of this this is just memory yeah no it's not this one it was that last one there or it could have even been this one i know it's one of these like something in here that just lines up so perfectly like i don't I, i'm pretty sure like hey, that might look nice but i'm pretty sure it's this i'm pretty sure we've got this here because this is what had lost the move and then and then it broke down in a big way and it hasn't stopped since so that's what this is doing right now sugar is the long-term like meta setup on this is that this is um you know if it, if it had held here at 1808 or if it held the hold level or if it held a daily break that would have been different but this is this is showing you that you know once once you lose this part of the move you're you're back down here and uh that, that this is already tested right this is already tested Big difference if it hits this or if it hits this if it hits this this is you know possible breakdown to 6500 which i believe is this base down here somewhere there's a 6500 level that's really crazy yeah right here base of this move 6500 i believe it was this actually yep 6500 exactly so there's your long term Break this down, go here. If this holds, it moves up. If this is one that's tested, it tries to go for 65. But if this holds, it goes like ping pongs back and forth. 
drag to the house by then. Maybe I'll bring headphones or something, sneak away with the family at like 11. <laughs> I mentioned a certain 1027 level back in one of the replays. Yeah, 10720 was a historic level. 720 is a historic level. No, no, 720 is just something hidden from way back in the day. Doesn't have any kind of impact? No, doesn't have any kind of impact right now. Like laddering from the weekly, you said? Like this to that? No. It's just another trend. It might hold it up long term, but more so is going to be what's important that happens up here, not down here. Riding this trend means that you're just going to be breaking all the levels that held you up at this point. If there was a trend that would be important, it would be this one. Wanted to double verify. Yeah, the problem with this trend is although it looks good because the angle is so like supportive over time, it's only going to be it's only going to be in use and in play maybe if we haven't touched it in like a year or two and we have just kind of given it some space to breathe because by the time we get there it's too close it, it's broken way too many levels on the uh, on the chart to actually like you'd have weekly levels you're closing under you'd have interior trends you're closing on it wouldn't be enough to hold it up maybe but i oh well man and it's not something i would trust let's put it that way it doesn't mean you can't you can take a trade on it but i wouldn't trust it Not something I would trust. But at least we have like our final targets now. Like at least we're in this part of the move where, you know, we, we can actually pull back. Um, so something else that, that it needs to be talked about about these, these base of the moves is that when you have a base of a move, it will typically create larger time frames as well. That's one of the things that make bases so important. So like if we were to mark this on the 15 here or, or this here, like if you were to mark one of these two, I think the hourly is the highest we could get to, right? Yeah, the hourly is the highest we could get to. So so the pro the thing about this is, is that it, it will end up like this base of the move somewhere inside of here, somewhere inside of constantly testing it over and over and over and over. This is where you see a lot of like reversal stuff happen because what happens is somewhere somewhere in the line here of having this base of this move for so long i haven't checked yet but i would love to say that there's going to be a four hour hold level right right here or some type of major intersecting point in the future that'll act as major resistance right there yep i knew it i knew it backside four hour level right off the base so, so that's part of the thing with these bases is that they often when you create a base of a move. Now, this isn't like a data points equal science kind of equation, but this is what you see a lot. It happens very often. You see the base of a move gets held for a long period of time. There's a move up and, and at that point you've created some cra crazy criteria and you move down straight under it. Like you literally go straight under it because imagine at this point here. You're on the four hour if you come below the base of the move now like if you lose the base of the move you've got a four hour backside you've got a, 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 a four hour front side you've got combo levels you've got a daily level like you've got everything there so so that's a very very common thing to see when you have like these bases of these moves is that they create massive levels like and and you can see it there let's try to find another one like where the base of a move holds I don't want to use this one. I want to use something more like base of a move like that. This kind of has a base of a move from here, which is this, right? Base of the move here probably created some crazy, crazy support. Somewhere in here, there was some type of crazy support created off of this just constantly holding for so long base of the move okay four hour right here base of the move four hour level mm, i don't like that one as much i like the more clear cut ones like this 
Maybe we just go find one in the past. Base of a move right here. Right there. Base of this move. Kind of moves up and down. But in here, in here there would be something. Let's find something more clear cut. Here you go. Here's here's about as clear cut as it gets. Um, inverse level right here. Base of the move. I bet you there's like a crazy level that got created right here. That's a four hour. It's probably like a daily backside somewhere. No, oh, there's nothing. It's just back and forth every day. You're so stupid. Weekly level. Let's fast forward this thing a bit here. Base of the move. Weekly level. Did you actually never gain this? Wow. That's fine. It's it's pretty far out there. Like that's that's a lot to gain. Where did we mark that? Okay, here. So we can delete. We can delete that one because that's the purple. Uh, base of the move. Get over top of it. Yeah, that's like a failed move. Of course, this thing fails down. This base of a move. You get over top of it. Create the weekly trend. Pull back under it. Yeah. So there's nothing there. Where else would you have one? Here's kind of one. Here's kind of one. Base of the move right here, right? Uh, let's take the replayer tool. Like you're moving up, 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 up. Kind of the same thing as now, right? Create the base of a move like this, right? That's kind of like the same landscape we're in. We're just constantly been moving up. Create the base of a move. <sighs> have a final part of the move up. What about the daily here? Start creating daily levels right there. Sure you oh my god dude sure you created this hourly trail right here right base of the move hourly hourly this one would be next right here that would be your next one right there see how it just kind of constantly creates this like chain of reverse events like reverse event reverse event daily hold level see what i mean about like the base of a move it just when you have like the base of a move like this, it, 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 it just ends up creating all sorts of like ridiculous levels. Like right here too. Here's another one. Like look how long this thing is holding. And so where is this base of the move right here? Origin level. Origin level like this right here ends up being some crazy part of the move. Like you just sit here long enough. It's like, okay, flip this chart. It's the same thing, right? Flip this chart, create the base of the move right. No, oh, that's not a good enough rate. Right here, that's one. That's a crappy one too. Let's go to the hourly time frame. Right, so that's like one base of a move, and then this ends up being something like inside of here. Okay. Origin. Origin looks like that's it right there. Nothing there. Nothing there origin it's got to be something lower right that move isn't well where were we hello we over here somewhere no well what the hell did it just turn my level yellow oh that's frustrating okay whatever keep moving on That's fine. I don't love it though. I like this as the base of the move. I like this as the base of the move here. Because this has been holding this whole thing down. And then when you break above it, like that's that same kind of thing when you look at it. Like pretend you're moving up right now, right? Pretend pretend Bitcoin is the same exact spot where it is right now. Base of a move, move up, break down a little bit below it. You could probably screenshot this and it's like an identical move almost. This is current, right? 30th. Why does this look so weird? I'm in a chart, that's why. It's like almost the same move. Base of your move here, move up. Base of the move, move up. Even like right there, right? Same, same exact move. Mm, 
this isn't the base because nothing's testing it. So actually, your polarity in this move might actually be like this, this trend. It's trend, holds trend, breaks down, hits the base of the move, back test it after losing trend. This moves down now, right? Yeah, like almost the exact same thing is happening. Well, I guess we're gonna see, right? That, that's the point about the bases of these moves is that like they, they create these ridiculous points of resistance. like. Uh, like I said, uh, imagine now if we get below this, it's over for Bitcoin. It's actually done. So Bitcoin has definitely like hit that moment. So that that's like these bases of the moves are so critical. It's the same thing. It's like the base of a move, break up, back test, move. We can find them. Here's another one right here, maybe. Kind of not really. Well, obviously here's one right here, or like whatever this was. Obviously there's a base of a move right here. It would have been something like this trail here. Possibly make an origin as a reverse, like whatever this is, either here or here, different time frame. It might be like right here. Or it could even be right here. There could be an origin right there. Or like base of a move like this, right? Like create, a, create the base of a move move above it when you lose that base you you have all the, all the time frames already developed anyways right base of a move it's, it's irrelevant if you break underneath it right relevant just just when you hold a move like that or if you go here daily you have this created so when you lose that it's already gone you're gonna have backside hourlies like it and, and it happens fast right like it happens fast let's try to find more So this one would be about identifying trend. You can already tell. This would be like an interior base that would already be have a dictation from trend. So this is your interior base, right? Like it has the test here, it moves up, and then it's also what can hold the move down. So that's like the base of the move, but prior to that, so this is a good example of not getting too attached to like origins or, or anything like that, because actually this would have been back testing this, right? Because this would have been polarity right here. So this would have been your polarized moment, right? Right here in the chart. Get over top of this, back test it, move up. So this is kind of the polarity and you actually have to go to your hourly time frame. So now you have something like this here to here. Come on, dude. So now you have this as a polarity, base of the move, polarity. So it's not always like an origin level or like you could, could have been like this. Oh, it's an origin level. Like it, the polarity was, oopsies somewhere else to be found, right? Where's another one? I'll catch up on it. So you would say the local range setting up the way it did pretty perfect for setting up the distribution in the near future. Okay, wait, let me read. So you'd say the local range setting up the way it did is pretty perfect for setting up distribution in the near Oh, absolutely, absolutely. This base of this move is like, it's, it's setting up the whole entire dump, right? You're already losing the move. Just will trend hold it or not? And then even even at that point, I would almost go like this and say, well, where's the actual base here? Looks like kind of like this. Is there some kind of origin or something that we have here? Some type of missing piece It wouldn't... Like, it almost looks like that, right? So we kind of have to do a little bit of work here to see where it is. This creates an inverse here which constantly held the move down. It reversed it to here. It reversed it to here, right? So it reversed it to there. So I would say it has to come back and hold this. I would say this was polarity on the move. But you do have a base, right? Like you could even say you have a, and now it's not there. Can't be there. We gotta go to, we gotta go time frame down for this. You've got one base right here. You've got one of them right here. Because that's what tested and it couldn't hold. And then it tested it again, couldn't hold. And this is that uh, 
level here, the Tessin, to go to the base. Tries to bake the base, base doesn't, hits it again, moves down, right? So you have one there, and then you also have one right here. And this has already back tested the hold to move up. So is there something even more localized that you could go after? That was like the more interior piece to this? Not really, because they're all the same as this. They're all the same as this. You can tell, origin, break, 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 breaks the move up. So you pretty much kind of have to hold over top of this base now. So if you were in this trade, that would be your target. Or you would say like, if you break this, obviously you're, you're just sitting in this thing for like a week, a week or two kind of thing. So that, that would be your first target. You also have this base here representing like that final piece up. So you do have a base right here too. Like that's why you're gonna see this bounce a little bit here. So yeah, I would say like the local is setting it up. Yeah, and th th those would be like the targets that you want need to hold over top of Marcus. I would say it is Marcus and exactly what I was waiting to put my order for a larger distribution. Yep. Good job, JP. Lower. I know that you've only been using from lower, low, lower, high. And the future trading would also be linked. No, nothing to do with that. It looks nice, but until we blow this four hour backside, I personally am nowhere near convinced long term distribution is ready to happen yet. But that's your next gap move. There's over 3% to be had in the interim. I would agree with JP. Getting beneath that four hour would, of course, set you up for much larger. Yep, I would agree with JP. Waiting, waiting for that. Play every move. Play every move. Play them all long and short. Play them all. But you're a pro at that nuke that playing every move, so I have no worries there with you. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been saying it a lot lately. Like, I look at setups. I look at setups, and this setup to me is nice. This is a nice uh, setup for distribution. If we get there is another thing, but it's a nice setup. It's a nice setup when you've got, you know, this is the four hour backside. This is the base. You get under it. You retest it. If, if this holds, it continues moving down. Like you've got a long way to go. It's not, it's not automatic. Oh, we're in distribution because we hit our final target. It was a good target to take. It was, you know, now we can go back and look at that target again. Like, let's go back and now look at it again and say, okay, did this make sense or not? Right? So now after this lesson, we go back to here and we say, let's look at that hourly now. You see why that hourly was such a good target? It can't really be here, right? Because it's like, well, what did it go after? Well, it went after this, right? Okay, well, what did this one go after? Well, not really that, not that, not this, not really that. Maybe it's just some like interior ladder point, who knows? But what I do know is that this was the base of the move. It's very obvious to tell on that first touch. Just because it goes deeper, it doesn't matter. If this is the base of the move, right? So. Hit that base of the move, back test to go up. So now when we look at this target for today, it should be very clear that, hey, that was a pretty smart target, right? J just like this. Like if you get below it, right? You're gonna have a little struggle to see if you're actually losing it. You get below it, you back test it, you reverse it maybe a second time, this thing's gone, right? So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of calls for entry here, right? There's, there's this part of the move, which could hold it down long-term. The setup is there. That doesn't mean it's necessarily gonna execute perfectly. Is this a good short? Yes. Where do you play it till? Well, you have to watch how this move is developing and you know, you've got an hourly hold level being developed and you know, where's the four hours way the hell down here? The four hours is gonna be close to the, the, the test of this base. So that's important to pay attention to. Um, you know, you've got your, your trend here that's that's holding you down. So it's a really good entry. That That's all you can say right now is it's a great entry and, and that the setup is here. So like if you were in this trade, the one thing I would tell people is that you can exit here. If you're not taking exit on a first bounce here, do not get out. Do not sit here and be like, okay, if it holds, I'll get exit. No, you're either taking exit here or you're waiting to see the bigger breakdown. You are never taking a second exit right there. That would be just like bonehead, dude. You either exit on first hit or you are waiting to see if it breaks down, right? You're, you are never like, okay, it hit. Okay, it's holding. Okay, now we take exit. No, if you're not taking exit exactly there, you're trying to go for this stuff. So your exits are kind of either like here on a first test or like back up here as like a, a break even because everything else in between could hold it back down to like 
go up, go like that. So that would be the trade, right? Like you'd be in it from here and you'd be sitting here saying, okay, well, let's target this. And, um, you know, that would be my exit. So the trade exists from here to here. It's like two or 3% or whatever. Right? Like, I don't know what this is. It's like 2.3%. No, it's the best of both of us on two or three. It's 2.3. So it's like 2.3%. If not, you're going to see if this move breaks. So, so your next exit would be from here. It would be like to here. 4%. You can maybe hold out for the whole level for 4.6, but the whole level could hold it. It bounces here. It goes down, blah, blah, blah. So, so you're either taking exit here or you're taking it like right here. And if you're not taking either of those, you're taking it way the hell down. And those are like first touch exits only. So all you can do with this trade is just, you know, you've, you've gotten, why is that not much properly? Or is it my eyes are just deceiving me? I think it is. My eyes are deceiving me. For some reason, when you're zoomed out, it looks like the candle's going through it. Maybe it's just me. I swear it looked like it was going through. Now it looks fine. Okay. I suck. Need new ones. Um, you know what I mean? Like the, 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 the setup is there. The setup is there. That's all you can do is you've got the polarized point on the side of the chart that broke it up. So this can also hold it down. I love the way it tested and instantly ripped off and now is creating another base. So you've got another base of the move here, which could act as entry in the future. If this continues to hold it, if you go down, you break here. But this was polarity before the move had a massive run up. Um, this is what can hold the move down. I love the fact that it hit and it's pulling back. And now you've got the setup is down here. So, you know, maybe entry is like right there, the base of that part of the move. You could even say maybe it's right here. That kind of does look like the base, to be honest. Hit, 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 breaks down, back test, move down. That does look like the base. You it might even be here, but it looks more like right here. Yeah, no, it's right there. Could you get entry up here? Yeah, maybe, maybe. I think the greediest I'd go would be like right here. You could go trend again, but if you start getting over top of this, you have to realize it's not, it's not always about, I've been saying this a lot to people lately. It's not always about getting a better price because getting a better price, like if, if you break over top of this level and get a better price for your short, it means that the move is just like moving up still. So what's the point of getting a better price on a move that's going up versus getting this right here and it hits it and it pulls right back. Like you, just because you can get a better price for your short here doesn't mean it's a smarter trade. You don't want it to go there just because it does. You almost don't want to take the short unless it's exactly right here, right? You just want to take exactly that and then it pulls down. Because if you break over this base, you're kind of just like, oh, are we breaking trend? Aha, you got here. I shorted there. Awesome. Such a good short. And then it goes like that. And it's like, that's not a good short. Like there's a logical short here. And that's when this hits and the price holds down. Like that's the setup, right? So it's kind of like the same thing. Maybe, maybe best case scenario, you can go like this and take, take the body of this as a rejection. But again, it's like you're getting a really good price on a bad trade. You know what I mean? Great short talking about the overall meta, I guess I'm not convinced Get for move to 12 K. Well, that's what people said when it was at 65k, right? You have the right idea, Nuke. Like, the only thing you can do is take the level and look at the setup. It could ultimately still go to 29. It could go to 26. Pull back off this. It could go to 29. Like, we got to see what pulls it back. If it blows through all those targets, maybe it's an accumulation again. But, like, there's a lot that can hold this thing down. You know what I mean? There's a lot. So the, so like the only thing you can do and, and nuke, you know, you can't even really enter this trade right now because you had to have entered it here and been holding this move, understanding that this setup breaks it down. So in a way you can't enter this trade. You can, you can maybe, maybe you can sneak entry here, maybe, but like, aren't you already like a full percent below that? 0.85 like that. That's a hard pill to swallow. This one is 0.95. Like maybe you could sneak entry here, but if you're doing that, it's to play the bigger breakdown. But like, it's pretty tough to justify entry on this trade at this point because it's trying to form a move down. And if you're not already in this move with that safety blanket, you could easily be in the negatives. Like also you could, you could also go and hit this right here, for example, and create this as a base to hold it down in the future. Like you could go and hit this five or six times and then it breaks down because eventually it just broke some trend on this side, right? So 
yeah, it's really tough to enter this trade right now unless you've been here. Like you could maybe get it here, maybe. Um, obviously the best entry would have been that trend or, or this, which could have possibly been the base for the future. Like this right here aligns with trend. Like obviously, you know, at the beginning of this lesson, even uh, like 30, 40 minutes ago, this would have been the right entry. But, you know, at this point taking, taking entry here would be really tough to justify just because it, it can just kind of start moving up. So, you know, it's, it's a tough trade because you've, you've either nailed polarity on this move and again, now that people understand bases of the moves and polarity after today's lesson a bit better, uh, like you could simply go back here and be like, hey, where's the base of the move? Like, yeah, yeah, here's the base of the move. Isn't that perfect entry for short? Yeah, yeah, like, like actually perfect entry. Like, it, it, it's, it's what broke Bitcoin up into like, into a big run up, right? Like the next range is up here. It, it, it broke Bitcoin up, so take it as a short. And you'd be in the short right now, free rolling it. So, you know, Nuke, when you asked like, hey, can we have a recap on bases? And I was like, yeah, go watch future trading. That, that That's why I said it, because you'll, you'll just get it after this lesson. There's no like need to go through a recap. We, we're doing that the whole day today. Because it, it, it's, it's more, more important to understand where does polarity exist? And let's read architecture. Let's stop marking origins and saying, here's an origin level. Let's break down the charts. Those are those are truths. Those are absolute truths, and you guys are great for doing that. But don't don't overlook everything else. Like it's more about understanding the architecture. Totally agree with you there, Cotton. Like the the, the 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 exits. I think you're talking about right, JP. If I know you, it's the exits because you you know it pretty well. So the base of the move will held long enough creates the higher time frame combo levels to gain. If the base fails, in other words, they create up the setup for distribution. Exactly choose. Yes, exactly, dude. Because that's exactly what this is going to be right here. Like, it, that's why this is such an attractive trade. Because the potential of it is so big. Because the setup is already here. Like, the setup exists right here. And this is the polarity rejection. It's like, setup, polarity rejection. Now all you have to do is hold and pray. That's kind of like what you always have to do. But when you see reversals in markets, this is the kind of stuff it's created off of. Because then... Like with everything we know about bases now, like um, um, imagine that you're looking at this chart in the future and you're like, like just delete this stuff for a second. We can just move it back. Imagine you're looking at this chart in the future and you go below this and you're like, oh, that's like a perfect reshort. That's a base of a move. That's an origin. That's a four hour backside. That's a daily level. So like this base of the move, it just creates like the ultimate resistance, right? So that resistance is already created. No matter, no matter when you go like this and come down, you're going to be below this. No matter, like this setup was really good for the charts for distribution. Like this almost has to hold up the chart now, which makes it very attractive for this to be the final short. Because if this has to hold up the chart, it doesn't have a choice now. It's fucked. Like now Bitcoin's put itself on a time bomb. Because if, if there's any local distribution, this thing's dead. Like it's literally dead in the water. That's the top of the move probably. And then you get your famous head and shoulders pattern off of this. And that becomes your head and shoulders. And it's the breakouts, bullshit, the, the, the garbage pattern, right? Like that's where it comes from. Like that's part of what it is, right? So like imagine now, even if you go up here, even even if you were to like go like, like this and then come below this, like, yeah, it's the setup. The setup is so beautiful right here. It's so perfect for distribution. So that's the problem when you see something like this. If for all the like the hodlers, like you're on a time bomb, doesn't mean you're gonna break it, but you're definitely on it now. Like this is it. But it, it, you sh you can see it. You can see it. It's not it's not that hard to see when you when you look at it as the base because it was the same thing with this level here. Like that setup is there now. So you hold this, you hold this, or you're kind of gone. So yeah, we'll see what Bitcoin does today. But like yeah, that setup is pretty gnarly. But yeah, exactly, Goose. To be clear, I agree with you. This could be, and if the setup falls through, it will die. It's a short. I would love to be in. Again, a setup is only a setup of possibilities on something tangible. Well, this is tangible on the charts right now. This, this one here, this has been here long enough that it is a tangible thing. It's just when we get underneath it, that's the question. Maybe we won't get underneath it. Maybe that's the thing that is, keeps us as polarity up is that we never do get underneath it. And that acts as major support in the future, right? So maybe that is a really important thing that this in the future becomes the bottom of a move up, right? What we do know 
And the only thing we know is that this has created like a, a major, like, I don't even know what you do. Hot pink, double, hot pink, quad thick. Like maybe quad thick's a little too thick. Maybe hot pink, triple thick. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, what do you do? Hot pink, triple thick it? Like that's, dude, I swear to God, I got to fix that issue. Like that, that's all you can do. Like it is there. It's not a, it's not an untangible anymore. It's there on the chart. It's just created, it exists. But, but, but maybe you never go back and test it. And maybe that's what holds up the chart too. So in, in, in any universe, this is like maxed out polarity. Close to maxed out. It's like triple thick. It's, it's not quite there, but it is triple thick. It's, it's, it's almost as good as it gets for like a setup, for polarity, for distribution. If I want to be the base on the far level, previous high retest could be the possible talent. Uh, 24182 the base from the four hour it could be i haven't looked like that but because th th this exists from before that um 24 one like this origin here maybe you're talking about you're talking about this right here being the base for that move uh it's possible let me go take a closer look uh no i don't like it i like it a bit lower to be honest i like it a bit lower because of this backside right here. I don't think the four tests that. No. Because the four is right here on this candle. This is the four right here. I like this backside. Could it hold the four? Sure. But I like the backside. So because the base of a move is what creates these combo levels, that becomes what needs to break to complete the setup. Yep. Of distribution, that's what has to hold, meaning it's polarity. Yep. It's never too thick, but <laughs> I try to keep an open mind about it. Polarity works both ways. Higher targets. If I was in a short though, I'm holding until I die. If you're in a short here, it's just a good position. It's it's nothing to fall off your chair and lose money over, but it's just a nice spot to be in. Like, okay, here's here's the thing, Nick. If you are in a short right now, and you're like, oh, I could lock up 1.35, 1 1.46, 1 1.5. You you wouldn't you wouldn't be sitting here, like ready to get out of this trade. You wouldn't be sitting here being like, oh, I'm still up 1.1. 1 .1. I don't want to lose anything more than like 1.04, so I'm gonna stop here. You know, like you wouldn't be doing that. You would just be, you'd be okay saying like, let's hold the move. Like even if we go to 0.4, that's fine. Like there's not, the, 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 the setup is too good to get out of the trade. And that's all you can do with this trade. Like it's, it's too good to get out. Let's see what pulls it back here. And, and this is another part of, of understanding the basis of moves. It's not always about just like, oh, I'm in a short, this is good. It's about analyzing in the moment. So now that we have all the proper information, now that we have the, the information that makes sense, now we can sit here and say, okay, what level does it hit? Therefore, how do my actions get affected thereafter? Right? So it's not always just about like, oh, I'm in a short, this looks good. Now we can sit here and say, okay, if it hits this level, it means this. If it hits this level, it means this. If it hits this level, it means this. If it hits this trend, it means this. If it brings over trend and touches this, it means that. If it goes up to here, it means that. It gives us the tools to like make those smart decisions. Now we can go through time frames and say, okay, what is it hitting? Okay, so that was one of the bases of the move. So we're more interested in this now as a base. So that means that maybe we're more interested in this, like kind of like this here. Uh, it just becomes the inverse there that we care about. So if it pulls up off this inverse, has it been trailing a set of fives? Five backside, clarity, inverse. So get under this and we're good. We no longer care about the base of the move, I don't think, but we can keep it there. We no longer care about that one. We've hit trend. Trend is good. If we missed anything on trend, we've got trend still intact. Any hourly implications, we could possibly market to the hourly, but we don't need to. So we could create an hourly trend if we reject, which would be even stronger. There's an implication here that we can create the hourly. So that's good. So that's good. So we can actually go up to like gain this hourly and pull back. What can we gain over the hourly? We could still reject the move, the reverse here. So reverse, which is also this, which is both fine. They'll both test at once. That creates trend. It's 919. Make a pullback in this three minute. 
also backside base of the move here, which is just this inverse here, which broke. So we don't want this. We don't care about that. So this becomes a good trade here. Maybe. Base of the move. Inverse backside. What is this 15 that I have marked? Reverse level 15. Go for the 15, hold it back, reject the 15 here, create the hourly. Like having this information allows us to make the proper adjustments in the move. See what I mean? In level, rejection, of creation, base, move seems like it fits the build perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you have what could be the base of the move, it's almost like buying the, it's almost like the origin level, right? Like right here, for example, this could be the base of this little, little part of the move. It have been a good short. That doesn't mean you would want to take that short. If it pulls it back and you are right, great. But I don't know how much I like that more than saying like, okay, because by buying this, there's a world where it's like, or maybe you could even say it was like this here, right here. There you go. So it's inversing this backside, right? So like, where does it end? Are you buying the base? Are you do the backside here. Was it this here? Was it this pull? Because this was kind of polarity in a way, right? Was it this? Was it the inverse here? Like you can just go on this infinite trail, right? So that's why you kind of want to go the high time frame stuff and say like, okay, because then you could would just like go like, oh, just right here. You can just kind of get into this like never ending story. So you want to mark the right information. It's about being better as a trader, right? I'd like this if it was a little higher. I wish it was like right, like, I wish it was like right there. I wish it was just a little higher, but it's not. So you pretty much have this here. That's the base of that move. Held it down. This is that backside right there. So maybe you want to just go for this, which is also that 15. So that's like that perfect level right there. Just a little bit in front of that 15. That creates the hourly there. So you reject the hourly there. So you want to go there and then fall straight down because then you're worried about like breaking over top of the hourly. So you can get here and then you can break it down without going over the hourly. So when this hits, you need to pull back below this pretty, uh, pretty aggressively, right? You have also hit this now, which is the same thing as hitting this. The only thing left, the only saving grace is that you've got the backside here, backside combos to the like little tiny valley there. So you have hit that 15. You have this here you've failed to hit the hourly and push past the hourly if you push past the hourly it's got to be a wicked pullback so you see how it's giving us like good clarity in the moment hit the 15 you're going to create the hourly wicked pullback or get out like it's giving you what you need to happen you've hit the 15 so now you need to like gain the next 15 like right now in this moment now you need to gain this one because you can actually create an hourly trend now based on how high you're going not sure if I think this actually didn't go as high, right? No, it didn't. So we don't want to use that. We just want to use this one. Give us a little bit more room to breathe. So it has hit this 15. We need to color that one. So it has hit the 15. There's like a three. I think there's like a one minute backside here, right? One minute backside or was like a three minute or five minute or something. Three minute backside. 15 minute. This is the base, which is also that part of the move. 24 versus 14. $10 difference. Nah, I like I like this. Up at the 15. Now you need to aggressively pull back. And you have to start with lower time frames. So like these are pretty pretty wicked candles. Uh base of a move created right here locally. Gotta get below this and stay below that. So you're, 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 you're kind of like polarity in the move, right? Got to, got to stay below this. Maybe you could even use a body. Below this or below that. Like above this brings you to that. Below this stabilizes the 15. See what I mean? Like it's creating your parameters in the moment. It's creating your parameters. It doesn't matter what color the candle you mark you is. No, it doesn't matter. With the greater picture of clarity. Yep, absolutely. Because one time frame is always another. You could go through these things and waste so much time being like, oh, one time frame is another. You know, like you could just go back and forth. But but now you've got like these two white lines. It's like a direct parameter of this 15 minute got tested. Is it done? No. Yes. Like you've got your no and yes. You've got your binary code on the screen. You've got your zero and your one. The, 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 is this true? Yes or no. So was this the level? Yes or no is, is shown to you on your screen right here. No. Yes. Or starting from the bottom up. Yes. No. Final level. Yes. 
final level? No. It's very binary. That's why bases of the moves are so important. It's why it's so important to not get so caught up. Like going back to the beginning of this lesson, what seemed like, oh, bases of the move. You know, what, what becomes so important to understand polarity and chart flow and chart architecture. Because now it allows you in the moment, right? <clears throat> I personally like this. Text the base, ladders the move, hits both reverses. I personally like that. You hit it, pull back. Don't gain the hourly. That's what I like. I've set it from zero. Went a little past that, Jesus. This is looking uh five minute reverse. Okay, you got clarity on the trade. You've got a five minute reverse. Okay. Okay, little little subpar entry, but you've got a five minute reverse. I'm surprised that goes up that far. You've got the five minute reverse. So now you know next candidate for your trade is the 15. So this can't really go past this. So I, I would looking to be creating support below. Like I would look to not go over top of this right now. It's the hourly. So this is where you got to be cautious. This kind of candle like decides it all. You've got to get underneath this or I would get out of this trade. Hit the hourly perfectly. And start deleting all this stuff. Redo all our work. Uh, we need that one. Oh, Jesus. Here, straight to that hourly. Oh man, yeah, that just it just doesn't look good. That's what you don't want to see, right? Like, so if you are in this from the top here, now you could start to say like, okay, what is my final implication? Oopsies, this origin right here is like final implication. Like at this point, you could get out break even at least. That that's nice. You can get out there break even. Five minute level, right? I think that's five minute level. This thing keeps. No, five minute levels here. Oh no, that was our trade where we entered, right? So that was the three minute level. So let's leave that marked. That was the three was here. And that's right, because that's the three plus the 15. Like this thing has to pull back wickedly. I'm gonna leave that as the three. I would even wanna be like right here right now. I would almost be tempted to get out of this trade at this point. The only good thing about this is that now you have an hourly trend. So that would be the only kind of positive in this trade, but I think I would just get out. So this is here. So we move there. No. Anything here with the bat right there. Uh, no, I don't like it. That's right, because that's why I didn't like it. No. Unless there's something on the one minute here. No, I don't like it. I just like the origin level. Origin, origin one minute here so this might have been something we missed so one minute back test right here right like one minute level right here reverses your next level down would, would have been right here which means your next one is right here you can't really break below this but you do have that origin level here so where do you where can you deep dive that to create the next part of the move well there's nothing here Maybe this is like the only thing you can deep dive past, but at this point, it's not even worth it. At this point, you're either in the trade somewhere from here or you're just out. One minute was hit. Reverse this one here. Reverse this backside. Ah, that would be too hard. Can't get below that. You got to stay under this. You you've got to close on it. Like I said, this this 15 minute now, now like you have to make this as a reverse. You got to just close under this. So like okay, so 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 you're in this trade. You're in this trade from the top. You start gaining this level. Get out of the trade. Is that hourly in up properly? Promise me you'll never drink alcohol. Okay.
Uh, this hourly is all kind of, kinds of messed up right now. Just got to do this for now. Or actually, you should be doing this for now. I don't know why it's so messed up. Trading view being trading view. You have to close under this now, this 15. Uh, I don't think there's any five minutes. Like, could you reverse this? Oh man, you're just getting to this stupid point. I wouldn't play this. I wouldn't play this. Origin level can be touched again. Yes. Maybe you could go here again. Then you're just at that same point where you're like, oh, you're going to go $3 at that point. It's not worth it. I don't even like the origin level at this point, to be honest. We can leave it, but I don't like it. I'll just reattach this on the 15 instead of the 1 because I don't know what's wrong with that chart. So you take an entry here. That's where I would have personally taken entry. Let's see. 11%, that's not great. And you're 9% now. It's not great. It's not great. I don't love it. You really got to lose this hourly here. You really got to lose this. You can, you can, I suppose you can hold the 15, but at least it gives you like kind of a danger zone, right? Like at least it, this gives you like that kind of danger zone right here. And if you're here, this is the sign. This is what I would look, look out for. It starts to look like a bit pumpy. You get out. Lock the profits. Take a free trade. This set up for real. Mm. Nah. At this point, I would just be in the trade from the top, and then if you kind of start closing over top of this 15, I would just be out. I would just... The whole point is that you're holding this hourly. I, I don't like holding this hourly here. And the only thing that you can do is create a 15 against this hourly, but if you start losing that 15 and you've gained the hourly, I don't like that. I don't like that setup at all. Maybe you could reverse this right here. Yeah, that's about it. Or well, maybe even the wick of this one right here, like... Uh, maybe the backside, but again, you're just kind of getting into stupid territory. Maybe the backside because it's trend, but uh, it just feels silly. It, it feels silly. This just feels a little better. You're getting up here. You're so close to breaking the move. It, it's just like in this kind of silly spot. I wouldn't want to see anything past this, I don't think. Again, though, in from here, break out of this, get out. That's how I would do it. Oh, did it actually go after this? Kind of like, not really, but kind of did. Here, maybe? Here? There's no other origins present. Here, maybe? Like this one? This would be the last candle I would stay in this if I was in my trade. This is really like the kill shot right here. Just going back to the, the very beginning. Like if you if you bounce off this hourly, it's just so brutal. Unless you get below trend here, I would not be in this trade. Although, to be fair, it hasn't created the hourly yet. Because now you have to adapt it. So the pullback could happen still at any time. So, so to be fair... It is technically still here, but again, uh, no, I wouldn't risk it. One minute trend or, 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 or the, the updated trend. <laughs> holds the hourly if it holds this, like, you know what I mean? It's just kind of getting too much. In here and that's it so that's a bigger time frame i believe right that's that five five right there you know maybe you create this move after all i guess we'll see i wouldn't be taking too many uh shorts i wouldn't be opening any new shorts up here to be honest not after hitting this hourly and gaining it if it moves down and you got a short great but the risk is just so high 
I would either be in short from here still and have not left. Or I wouldn't take any new shorts. I wouldn't open up a new short here. There's, I just don't think it's worth it. 24, 585. Yeah. I think the only thing I would do is maybe justify that as my exit point, like a trigger. Three minute. Here? Oof. It's not bad. It does ladder the move nicely. You can create trend off of it. Well, the only thing you can do is be in short from here and then, you know, define a trigger point. That's all you can do. But uh, taking a short here, uh, you could try it, but man, that was, uh, that would be tough, but you could try it. You could try it, I suppose. But if it fails, you just, it's like an auto lose money. You don't like, those are pretty risky spots to take, you know, when they work, they're great. But you know, a lot of times they just. You end up losing 30, 40% on them. A lot of times what happens is it, you know, like a lot of times what's gonna happen is you have this here and then it does something like goes up to here and then pulls back and your exit was like right here. And then you're down here and you're like, man, I wish I could have made my 5% off this level. If only I would have, you know, been in from here, for example. Although if you were in from here, I don't know how likely you would have been still in, but you know what I mean? Like that happens often where you enter here and then it goes like so far above your target that you have to stop that you have to get out. And then it's like way the hell down somewhere. So I, th th those are risky levels when they work, they work brilliantly, but their, their risk is high. I know a lot of people see that. I, I, I see people do that all the time. Anybody who says they don't is lying. I see people do that all the time. They have a crazy level that they think, and then it goes above it just to go below it, just to stop the most stop loss hunting you, right? Like it's just the risk on this level becomes really high. I would rather take this level if it hits, pulls back below this hourly, and then take like a bounce. Like it kind of destroys this, but right now the integrity of this hourly is just way too big. It, it's just way too juiced up, man. Like it can still lose the level. It's still got 20 minutes. It hasn't gained it yet, but that's why it's important for it to like either not gain this or, you know, somehow like have it as a reverse level somewhere or have a trend or some, some other bigger thing that would like supersede this hourly because, you know, getting over top of this kills it as a level. And you did just bounce off the hourly. So like in 20 minutes, if you're still lingering around here in 20 minutes, you created the hourly and there's no more reverse 15. Not a clear one through the wicks anyways. Like that that would be tough to justify. You know, maybe you like linger here and then create this, but. Watch out for that too. Short if it fails, 24, 515. Um... I would honestly just still be in a short from here to open a fresh short there. No, I'd rather see it lose this hourly first. I, the last thing I want to see it do is like hold this for the next 45 minutes and then it would just move up through trend. You get rolled like that a lot. You got, everybody does. The only thing I would consider shorting blue would be right now to lose this like right here. So that we we lose this current five minute level or this one here but i don't know if i would short the moment we lose this like maybe i would say like if if i had to short right now if i absolutely had to short right now so what is this that it's hitting that's that five minute level so it's holding that move so that's creating that as the base this five minute level and you've got a three minute origin here All you're doing is setting this up as a move up off this hourly. Five minute reverse, base, hourly hold. If I absolutely had to take a trade here. Holy shit, this is tough. This is such a tough short to get into. If I absolutely had to take the trade, where would it be? 
what did you do on the bottom? Create this base, lose it, hold the move. What kind of setups do you have? That there, that there. You're holding this origin, but you're not really holding it, are you? No. This here. Six hundred, maybe. Be shooting in the dark. Might as well five eighty-five it. You gotta go use other theories here to see where this thing goes. Six forty five. Seven. There's your local trend. Local trend being hit right now. Thirty-four. Only spot I'd open a new short. And if I missed the move, I'd miss the move. If I miss this move, I miss this move. I wouldn't be anywhere else. There is no way I would take a local trend against holding an hourly like this and breaking all the interior moves. It's too tough to justify. 634 is where I would be, nothing else. Nothing else here. If this local trend holds, so be it. I don't really care. Local trend would be one spot and 634 would be the next. What are you doing? Wizard stuff? Yeah. Well, you'll see it hit this and then it'll pull right back, dude. It might be off a few dollars, but they're just not showing on screen what I'm doing, so. I'm kind of having to use my imagination a little bit without. Hey, look at this. Maybe it's local trend. Uh, but again, though, I wouldn't have taken this trade. The risk is too high for me. I don't like high risk trades. I've come to realize that over years and years and years of trading. I like taking more guaranteed easy trades that make money. Catching knives is a great feeling, but just getting re-entries is always better. Like literally always better. Come to terms with that over the years. The rush in catching a knife is huge. It's, it's, it's like being on a run of something, speed run or like a, world record run or something like that it's just like a huge rush behind it but you know it's just re-entry is so safe and easy to play it's so easy to play re-entries even for like half a percent here and there you just scale up your leverage make half a percent is so easy making like 50 percent you just scale up money i've come to terms with that over many 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 years of trading 
but catching knives is like nothing else it's like it's, 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 it's a rush you don't get anywhere else but you know stable easy money making is like yeah you could have taken trend here and taken your 20 or 30 percent walked away wait for the next part it's, it's a better way to trade like here you go uh eesh, that's a little thin i guess i guess you'd be hoping it pulls back or you just kind of be getting out at 10 percent you'd be hoping it pulls back like to this like 505 level here backside right here 25 percent be like a thousand dollar trade well the easy trades are constant like they're just every like two to three minutes there's an easy trade it just they don't always yield you the kind of massive like sometimes you have to be happy with like 15 or 20 percent in a trade but you just have to master limit exiting I would say no and yes choose. I would say test that, but then refine it. Oh shoot, it's already almost 10 o'clock. I didn't realize how long we were. I just was having fun doing mentorship. Um, okay, hopefully everybody really enjoyed today. It was Today was a big day because polarity and stuff is something that I'm seeing a lot of people struggle with right now. So hopefully everybody really enjoyed today. And uh, basis of moves, what we started with, what sounded like kind of a weird topic to, to start with, but re really showing where you can get pinpoint accuracy and allows you to then further flow through the architecture, I think is really, really critical right now for, for where people are and what I'm seeing. So.